IoT is very commonly seen in healthcare now. In fact, two of our hospitals here in Western Australia uh, have uh, over 30 to 50,000 uh, sensors in them. That's the Fiona Stanley Hospitals and the New Perth Children's Hospital. However, IoT can be found at all parts, aspects of the healthcare ecosystem. On body might include things like wearables, uh, implants, smart devices, for example. Implants might be things like pacemakers for cardiac control, uh, infusion pumps that are related to diabetes. And all of these are increasingly becoming uh, at least Bluetooth connected, but sometimes even internet connected. And they're all vulnerable potentially to attack. In home, we're having an increasing uh, number of devices that are related to healthcare. Home medical devices, uh, blood pressure monitors, thermometers, uh, blood sugar meters, those sort of things. Um, activity monitoring for looking for falls in the elderly and then consultant consultations and coaching as well as uh, future digital assistance uh, both in the form on your smartphone and computers but also potentially as robots. In the communities uh, we're seeing uh, an increased number of smart devices and cyber physical systems uh, in supply chain logistics for example, cars, emergency response, automatic kiosks, uh, controlled lighting, that sort of thing. Clinics um, themselves and then finally hospitals, um, as I mentioned, use a vast array of uh, IoT and control systems. So some of the systems, for example, in place in modern ho ho hospitals like Fiona Stanley and uh, Perth Children's are things like automated robots that carry uh, drugs from the pharmacy, which in and of itself is automated, up to the wards, uh, carrying food up to wards, for example, but also automated sensors and uh, drug delivery systems, operating theatres, that sort of thing. Combined with all of this, of course, so the back-end processing that may involve, involve machine learning, decision support, analytics, etc., and, of course, the uh, cybersecurity elements of this. So the biggest area of use is in monitoring, including remote monitoring. I've mentioned you, um, the hospitals. Uh, Aging in place is another area where we, technology is hopefully going to allow the elderly to stay in homes for longer. And IoT can be used to establish what are called activities of daily living and detect changes from the norm. Cardiac implantable electronic devices in the UE, EU. Cardiac implantable electronic devices, so things like pacemakers, for example, and other monitors in the EU. Cardiac implantable electronic devices are things like pacemakers and uh, heart monitors. And in the EU alone, between 500,000 and a million devices a year are implanted. They can monitor heart rate for arrhythmias, and some are Bluetooth enabled to allow data upload to remote monitoring services. Consumer heart monitors like smartwatches now include arrhythmia detection, um, as in the Apple Watch and also in Garmin. Of the risks in IoT healthcare, privacy is probably the biggest risk. The ability to interfere with commands for insulin pumps or cardiac implantable electronic devices. The ability to interfere with commands for insulin, insulin pumps and cardiac devices or deliver fatal doses of insulin uh, or an excessive charge is a real possibility. There's the continuing problem of remote installation of firmware on these devices. Attack software on phones or computers that allow data to be stolen, commands to be issued. Falsification of vital signs from monitors, which could be a problem. For example, that you could report that somebody is actually fine when they're going into a cardiac arrest. And of course, there is adversarial attacks on machine learning algorithms. And that's something that we will deal with in the last lecture of this series. To mitigate IoT healthcare risks, 
manufacturers of healthcare devices are becoming more aware of the security in their products, so no longer dependent on network isolation or obscure protocols, which, like in the cyber-physical systems generally, uh, manufacturers were dependent on. Implementation of encryption and authentication on the devices has become more the norm. Protection against ransomware attacks and applying more general IT cybersecurity controls. Sometimes you hear this differentiation between IT and OT. So OT is the realm of looking after the sensors and uh, valves and actuators of of industrial control systems. And in fact, in hospitals, IT look after the uh, IT systems that manage servers and uh, admin type functions. Uh, But there's an interoperability, obviously, between IT and OT and an overlap. Privacy protection has been delivered through a variety of different means and include techniques like differential privacy, homomorphic encryption, and privacy spaces with edge devices. Differential privacy is a technique where data from a phone is randomized with some noise before being uploaded Uh, and aggregated. And that makes it difficult to actually determine the real values from the phone. It allows analysis of the aggregated data without the possibility of actually identifying individuals. Homomorphic encryption is where the data is always encrypted and queries are performed on the encrypted database uh, and returned uh, only in the aggregate. So again, you can't derive individual uh, information or identify specific um, individuals. Privacy spaces with edge devices basically put a perimeter around a network within a home, for example, and that may be a privacy space uh, of a bedroom or a living space, uh, or even the body itself um, has specific Uh, edge devices that retain data and don't allow the data to escape that privacy space unless authorised by the owners of the space. Modern cars may have upwards of 70 plus electronic control units, ECUs. Semi-autonomous cars like the Tesla also have computers to manage the self-driving. There is also a media control unit. Communication in the car is done via one or more CAN buses. A CAN is a controller area network and a specific protocol that is used within cars to communicate. Control can be over things like the engine and safety systems, lighting, user experience, parking systems, cruise control and lane guidance, for example. CAN itself doesn't use encryption, but it has a CRC, a cyclic redundancy check, for message integrity, i.e. there's very little protection um, other than integrity. You can access the CAN via an onboard diagnostic port and you can then take data off that. Cars are now also internet connected for remote monitoring against breakdowns, theft and there are remote control facilities available that you can sometimes access through smartphones. So there are a variety of different risks that cars face. Uh, Wireless keys in particular can be spoofed and subject to other forms of attack to enter the vehicle and start the car. You can spoof sensors. In 2010, researchers showed the ability to attack the tire pressure monitoring system of cars, for example. You can denial of service attack the onboard diagnostics port. Uh, You can then remotely control the accelerator brakes and steering which is frightening, obviously. And in two hackers, Miller and Valasek, in 2016, demonstrated this on a Jeep Cherokee. Uh, in one attack, they wirelessly accessed the CAN bus and put the ECU into boot ROM mode, which meant it was inoperative. You can disable safety systems, and you can hack the remote monetary systems, such as OnStar, which operates in the US. Another uh, risk is accessing private information that may be stored in things like the GPS unit or even the media center, and that may give away location data. So to mitigate these risks, one approach is to segment the network 
limit access to the end user, use encryption, authentication, an intrusion detection system. But these mitigations come at increased cost and complexity and the industry is reluctant to implement it. Of course, the car industry also is subject to uh, strict controls and so changes in any of these protocols can impact their uh, certification for a, col a car that is on the market and so they have to be particularly careful about making changes. There are also limited resources of processing and memory which means encryption and IDS are difficult to implement in a car system.